In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up an ESP32 Bluetooth proxy. I'm going to show you how to install ESP Home, where to get an ESP32, how to flash it, how to add the web UI to it so you can see what it's doing, and how to add it to Home Assistant. If you've never done anything with ESP32 before, don't worry, it's actually really easy. Hi, welcome. I'm Jeff with Fast How To. Well, for now, I'm actually looking for a better name for the channel. So let's start with the most basic question. Why would you want a Bluetooth proxy? Well, the max range of Bluetooth is about 30 feet or so. And that doesn't take into account obstructions like walls, ceilings, furniture, that kind of stuff. If you want to be able to communicate with Bluetooth devices, that are out of reach of the location where your home assistant server is, you're gonna to wanna to use a Bluetooth proxy. That's my use case, that's why I'm doing this. Now, these little devices are also able to act as BLE location trackers. So if you're one of those people that constantly carries their phone around with them, or maybe you wear a smartwatch, then you can use the beacons from those devices so that home assistant can figure out what room you're in in your house, and then you can use that information to trigger automations to make your house even smarter. I haven't set any of that up just yet, but if and when I do, I'll be sure to make a video about it for you. Another great use case for a Bluetooth proxy is if you're running Home Assistant as a VM or maybe in a Docker container, right? If you're running it just on a Nook or a Raspberry Pi or something, and it doesn't have Bluetooth built in, you can just get a Bluetooth USB dongle and plug it in and you're good to go. But with a VM or Docker, getting those devices passed through into your Home Assistant instance is a little bit more work. So it's a lot easier to just use a proxy that you can communicate with across the network and then you don't have to worry about any of that. So this tiny little device here is called the Atom Lite and it's made by a company called M5 Stack. You can get it on Amazon for about $27 if you want to get it quickly, uh, or you can order it directly from M5 Stack for like seven or eight bucks. Uh, but be warned, they do ship from China, so shipping time might be a consideration for you. Now, there are also lesser expensive ESP32 boards available on Amazon. Uh, I've seen like three packs for 15 or 16 bucks, uh, but they don't come with cases and I don't have a 3D printer, so I chose the M5 stack because it's all in one package already and looks nice and it's pretty cost effective. Let's get into how to set this up. All right, so first things first, if your system has Bluetooth built in, but you can't reach the devices that you're trying to communicate with, or the communication's a little bit spotty, I would recommend disabling the onboard Bluetooth. And when I say disable the onboard Bluetooth, if it's already in your system, you don't wanna just go into the BIOS and disable it. If you do that, what's gonna happen then is it's gonna rearrange the order of your USB devices, and so any other dongles that you have in your system, like Zigbee or Z-Wave, they might change to a different USB port internally in the system, different identifier, and then you're gonna have problems. So I would recommend doing it this way. Just go into your devices and services, integrations. Mine's already disabled here, but look for Bluetooth, and then under configuration, next to the device, right? This is my built-in Bluetooth adapter. That's the MAC address for it. I just Go over here and say disable. And then Home Assistant won't try and use this anymore. So you don't have to worry about it. And it will always use the proxies that are closer to the devices. All right. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to install ESP Home. So we'll go to settings and add ons and add on store and ESP Home. If it's not listed here, you can just click search, but we'll install ESP Home. And I always leave start on boot enabled and I like to enable watchdog and then we'll just click start. And there you go, it's running. So now we'll go into the web UI and you can see these are the two devices that I've already got added to my production home assistant instance. So the next thing that we wanna do is we need to take this guy here and we need to flash the BLE proxy firmware onto it. 
will go to esphome.io. I'll leave a link for this in the description for you. Uh, but under ready-made projects, we're just going to click Bluetooth proxy. And then I'm using the M5 stack. So I'm going to select that one. And then I need to plug this into a USB port. So here's a USB-C data cable. Now it's connected. So then I'm going to click connect and select that, click connect. Install Bluetooth proxy, install. All right, installation complete. So we'll click next. And then we're going to configure our Wi Fi. Connect. And I would recommend skipping the Add to Home Assistant here. Um, it's easier to just go ahead and do it yourself. So. We'll go over to Home Assistant, and you can see it just shows up. Click Adopt. Give it a new name. And I am actually not going to add this, but it'll just show up like the DEN BLE proxy, because uh, I only ended up needing the one. This one provides enough coverage for me. so. The next thing that you're going to want to do then um, is you want to add the web UI to it so that you can see this stuff here so you can see what's going on with the device. Uh, in order to do that, you'll hit edit and then add these two lines to the web server and then save, click install. It'll push that information down onto your ESP32 so that you can just point a web browser at it then, and you'll get to see this log on the right-hand side. Makes life a lot easier. So once you've got these all added to Home Assistant and flashed and everything and configured, just go ahead and unplug it from your computer, and then put it wherever you need, around the house or the garage or wherever. You will need to power them, of course, with a USB cable, and I just like to use these little guys here, available on Amazon, you get two of them for like, six or seven bucks or whatever. I'll leave a link in the description, uh, but they work great. And they've actually got two USB ports on them too. So, so once you've got that configured, any Bluetooth devices that are automatically discovered that are compatible with Home Assistant will show up in here. So that's it. Uh, now we've got a working Bluetooth proxy. So any devices that that Bluetooth proxy discovers that are compatible with Home Assistant, will automatically show up in your UI under devices and integrations, and you can just go ahead and add them. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll show how to add the August or Yale smart locks to Home Assistant via Bluetooth so that you can have local control of them. If you like the work I'm doing here and you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com. My patrons have access to all sorts of exclusive benefits, such as early access to advertisement-free videos, free t-shirts, copies of all my configuration, automation, and dashboard YAML files, as well as much, much more. Benefits start as little as three US dollars per month. There's a link in the description, or you can just click this QR code here. If you've made it this far, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that you're able to get your own Bluetooth proxy successfully set up by following the steps that I've shown you here. I hope that you enjoyed this episode's t-shirt, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Until next time, go automate something, will ya?